Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to build this kit. Right now it's just taped together, which is something that I do for all of my projects so I can make sure it goes together before I actually put glue on it. It's not a bad idea to use some masking tape and check things twice. But basically it's going to be a greenhouse and I'm going to show you how to put it together. Okay, so once you have your kit taped together then untaped and you have all your parts and everything, you want to take a damp cloth that you're not going to need for anything else because you're going to have to throw it away afterwards. Or I use regular old baby wipes. And you want to remove the burn marks from the laser just by going over top of it gently. And it should come off with no problem. Okay, it's going to be on all the edges. And also on like the back and the front of your gingerbread just go straight across it it should come off fairly easily and then be sure not to get it wet just damp that way it doesn't warp on you okay let it dry it should only take a minute to dry if you want to paint it you want to paint it with a flat paint. I like to use Rust-Oleum's chalk paint for this. Um, and then the exterior, if you want to add a gloss, you can always add a gloss after the fact. One side will have like a wood look and the other side will have just the regular MDF board of the kit. But as you can see, it's coming off. And that's going to be on every um, laser kit you get because the laser does it. Now, I do give it one wipe before I send it, but, you know, it still wouldn't be bad to do it twice. Okay, so once you have them wiped, you want to go ahead and let it dry. And you'll see the difference in color when it's dry and when it's wet. Now, with this is the back and then this is the top, I like to put this on the bottom and have this on the top on the inside. So that it matches and then I put that on the outside okay so the first thing you need to do is you need to get yourself some wood glue or crazy glue and when you're putting this together you need to be very careful if you're using crazy glue because it'll adhere pretty quickly and you won't have much room for error um, wood glue is going to take longer to dry so you're going to have to wait in between you know setting it up and then you're also going to want to get yourself a square so that when you're doing it, you can have it level. So, okay, so I've got my little square tool here and then I'm just going to apply some wood glue here and I'm just using regular wood glue from Home Depot. And I'm just doing a little bit as you can see because I don't wanna put an excessive amount on there. And then I'm gonna lightly go over it And this is the um, tight bond that I'm using. I also like Wood Glue Max. That's also nice, but Home Depot stopped selling that and that's what's close to me. And then I've got a little bit of Loctite and this just kind of gives it a little quick grab. I like to mix the two, you don't have to. Okay, so this is going to go on here and then you're going to have one eighth of an inch that's going to have to hang over on each side so you want to put your tool or a piece of scrap wood or whatever you have that's an eighth inch thick and you want to put it there and line it up right like that That would be Sebastian, you guys here. He's, he's talking in the background. Okay, so then you wanna go ahead and line up some glue along this edge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put some right along here. 
and then along here. And the thicker part of this goes on the bottom for the side. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this side here and I'm going to put it all along this edge. And I'm gonna square it up with this edge. Okay, then I'm gonna go ahead and press this down and squeeze all this together. And I'm gonna take a baby wipe and I'm gonna go ahead and wipe the inside here. And I'm gonna take my little tool here and I'm gonna use the point of it, but you don't have to use the point of this. You could use the point of something else. And just get out that excess glue. Okay, now you're gonna do the same thing on this side. Okay, so it should look like this from the inside. I went ahead and added some tape to kind of hold everything secure on the bottom until it completely sets up with the glue. Now for the next part we're gonna let that dry a little bit. I'm gonna show you how to do the hinge and when we do the hinge it's gonna end up looking like this and it's gonna open on the out. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is get your front door where you need it to be, make sure everything fits in place and you have everything lined up. Then you need to get one that is an L, which looks like this, for each top and bottom. Then you're going to need two of the straight pieces for the top and the bottom. Okay, now you're going to need to get these two little blocks. They're two different sizes. And what I like to do with them so I don't have such a big block behind it is I like to take this block, and you need to be very careful when you do it, line your blade up like that to where it's nice and even. Once you have it lined up, keep your fingers away from the blade. and it just goes right through it and you get a thin slice off of it. You wanna do that to get two of these, one for each and it comes with two big ones so you don't have to worry about the excess of the extra piece. And then you're gonna do the same thing with the larger one. And if you just go in at the corner at the top and work your way in. It'll just go right through it without a problem. That's what I like to do to make it thinner. You don't have to do that at all if you don't want to, but I just think the bigger block looks bulky on the back. So, or you can just not use it at all and not see this and just see the squares. Either way works. Now, once you've done that, you want to turn over your house front or your um, greenhouse front and you want to take your little pieces that are long and they are going to get crazy glued that's what I'm going to do with it instead of using wood glue right to the inside edge over top of the one that has the double mark. Make sure that it doesn't overhang. It's got to be inside of that. Otherwise, it'll stop your door from being there. Now just put that right like that and you're going to do that here as well. Now you're going to take the smaller one and you're going to glue it on the back side of this. And I'm putting the cut side down. Be sure not to crazy glue your finger to it. 
and repeat that process for the bottom. Let that set up for a second. Flip over the first one that you did because it should be set up. And you're going to take the long, skinny ones and you're going to put a dab of glue inside each. Make sure when you put it in there, you have the holes facing up and down. I take a baby wipe and I wipe off the excess glue while it's still wet. Take your second one with the holes facing up and down and put it in the second hole repeat that process for down here. Now you should have something that looks like this. And when you paint it, the crazy glue won't show. I'm going to set that aside so that can finish setting up. By then, this part should be pretty much set up. Now, you're going to take your little L pieces and you're going to place them inside these holes and they're going to be facing toward where the hinges would be on the other one. So the L should be facing to, or the loop with the hole in it should be facing to the left. Once that's set up, it should fit right inside there like that. But in the meantime, you should have some decorative little pieces that came with your set that look like this. These pieces are going to go right here. They serve absolutely no purpose whatsoever other than for decoration. So if you don't like them, you don't have to use them. Just glue them right in place. Wipe off any excess glue, and there you have your hinge for the door. Let it set up. Now you're going to need some stick pens after you've lined them up. You want to put the stick pen inside the top and inside the bottom. I am so not left-handed. It's really not that hard, but if you're not left-handed and you're trying to do it left-handed, it can be quite challenging. But I was trying to let you guys see through the camera. Okay, so now for this part, it's going to be hard to show you on the camera and hold this without them falling out. You're going to take the stick pen and you're going to just bend it like that. And then hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing.
and bend it. Once it's bent, take a pair of pliers of some sort to hold that with so it doesn't go flying across the room. And nip that off. And of course you can make your little things tighter once you get it knit to wrap around if you like. But your door should have a, oop, that stick pen fell through the hole. It must not have a head on it. Let me see. Alright, well, the door should open and close like that. I'm going to have to redo that hinge because for some reason that stick pen fell through. Alright, so if your head pen or your stick pen does not have a big enough head like that one did, those just came from like a dollar store, so they must not be very large on the top. But um, you can switch it out for a different stick pen, or you can just use a head pen that they use for jewelry making. But there is the door hinge. You can draw a hole and put a doorknob on there, obviously, if you'd like as well. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these little bits. The next step is to put glue all down here, all down here and up here and glue this on the face. Once you have this glued on here, you want to go ahead and put some masking tape on there to hold it in place until it dries. I didn't use crazy glue for the front. I need to be able to adjust it once I lay it down. Once you have that done, the next step is to do the roof. We're going to put glue here and here. Now, if you want your roof to be able to lift off, then don't glue it. Just put hinges on it and just lift it up that way. But I'm going to go ahead and glue mine on here. And you want to leave about 1 8 inch on each side. So align glue here and here. Crazy glue is clogged up. Story of my life. I honestly love this glue, but they've changed the design in the way that they're making the bottles, and this new design seems to be more cloggable than um, the old design. I didn't have as many problems with the other design clogging up as I do with this one. Okay. 
you don't get the crazy glue on your fingers but you need to line it up to make sure you got it pretty much even with this top piece once you have it even there then just tape it to hold it you can also use sheet protectors if you want to put glass on it repeat that on this part side again if you want to be able to access the inside from the top rather than going through the door like this then you can just put a hinge on it they sell little miniature dollhouse hinges that look sort of like these and you can just epoxy them to it and then lift it up and down that way and then this would just kind of raise up like that and shut like that it would just kind of go up and down but that's entirely your preference um, I'm just doing it this way because I have no intention of going in here and accessing it through the roof now you should have a tiny bit of a gap here and that's okay you can put just a dab of crazy glue on there and hold it together for a second until it kind of attaches itself to it and then once you do that we'll glue the gable to it or the gingerbread trim whatever you call it where you are One second to set. I'm gonna just kind of hold that there so I don't get more crazy glue on my fingers. It's to the point my phone doesn't recognize my fingerprint anymore because I keep getting crazy glue on it this week. So we're just gonna let the tape hold it for a second. All right, it's been a second. Now you want to take your gingerbread trim and you want to go ahead and put some crazy glue on all of the sides of the inside. And then you're going to slide that, that little gap that you had at the top, you're going to slide it in the gap. And that's the reason why the gingerbread is here, to fill that gap. If you're doing the hinge, you're going to have to offset the gingerbread a little bit. fingers are getting stuck. Here it is, all done. Now if you want to watch part two, I'll show you how we're going to make the shelves for inside like I did with the other greenhouse that Dad and I built a couple years ago. When you paint it your crazy glue marks will hide and again you can wipe off the burn marks if it doesn't come off which it should but sometimes it might take two times to get it off
This is 112 scale. All right, well, thanks for watching. Check out part two when we make the shelves and add the plants and paint the outside. Thanks a lot. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a question, suggestion, or comment below, and I will put the link for this as well if you want to order the kit. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.